again, but what we're out to explain the statement, which is the core of the Maimer in many ways, that the Rishimu called Sa'ir Lenoga Bay Hatzimtzum, right? That's what we're explaining. So perhaps we can phrase it this way. This is actually useful. I mean, in understanding anything we're talking about, and when it comes to say the Shtal Madregis, to frame it like this. Namely, Hashem narrating what's happening. God saying, what are you doing? And he's narrating. Now, the the uh, to understand the motion, that's not a sort of motion. This is not this is the Indian. To understand the Indian, when I say Hashem is narrating, that means it's revealed. It means that's what's transparently expressed there, and we'll see how the conversation evolves. As you'll hear, as you'll hear, which I'm doing this together with you. I didn't think it through fully, just the idea of how to express it. So let's start from the beginning. This is the Atmos. All of a sudden, there is this Indian of Ayur in Surf. What's happening, God? What what uh, what it what, what what's the reason quote unquote by reason we mean what's the objective going from Atmos to Eirin Surf? What's wrong with just you alone? I decided, says God, that I want a creation and a dira betachtoinim, and in this creation. They should be higher and lower, closer to me and further from me in the perception of creation. And in the lowest state, that's where my essence I want, I've chosen, I desire, I decide it should be revealed. So to do that, says God, this is the beginning of the process. First, I'm revealing an infinite beyond description light, power, expression of me. Now what is, so what you're seeing now, God says, primarily by my design, is bleakable. This is the highest, infinite, the highest, uh, and I've created this whole notion of high and low, and it starts right here. This is the highest revelation of me, which no even remotely find that creature could experience. But the whole point of this is, so latent, not expressed within the early itself, is my desire for finite tune, for gvul. But that's not overt there. What's overt, what's what's seen there, experienced there, is believable. Now watch, says God, next stage. Now I'm going to remove eclipse. This is the great symptom. This infinite light, no longer revealing it. And in its place, as far as the light is concerned, it's dark. There's no revelation. A mock and a place devoid of my revelation. But of course, there's nothing devoid of me. So I'm still present. The essence is present that goes without saying. But not only that, not only is my essence forever present at all levels, but my desired goal and purpose of creation is forever present, likewise, in the whole process. And therefore, there's a Rishim. The Rishimu means there's still an impression, literally, of this infinite light. Look closely, he's telling us. It's not completely dark. What you're seeing here is, for the first time, the emergence of my power of finite.
which is con eclipsed completely the bleakful, the infinite light. But as you can see, that's just much me as the infinite light is. And this power of finite is really what the whole intention is, is to create a at the end through the whole process of the continued work of the Tzimtzum, a very finite, limited world that completely obscures me. Period. At the level of the Rishima, it doesn't, as you can see. The Rishima is saying, this is God's expression of the power of finite. Following so far? Uh, this is, yeah. Now watch where this is, God. Now I'm going to reintroduce Revelation. We'll call it the Kav. Because it's going to be a projected, graded uh, projection that's going to produce a whole series of, of gradations and levels and worlds. And this oil, which is now revelation, is going to be projected by me through this tzimtzum. So where the tzimtzum harishan completely eclipsed the oil, leaving the rishimbo, as we just explained, what that eclipse means, now the kav through the tzimtzum is going to be, on the one hand, revelation. So it shares that in common with the, oil, the original oil in self expression. It's oil. But as it continues to progress, and this the, my power of gvul, of tzimtzum, continues to operate, I continue, I'm continuing to screen this revelation throughout the entire process, producing four worlds, upper and lower, etc. So the kav is giloi. The kav is river. The paradox that emerges is like this. The kav is giloi, but the kav, because it's it's revelation through the tzimtzum, it's re revealing by creating a whole hierarchy of closer and further. The greater the tzimtzum, the further the distance in terms of the experience of the level that's produced. It feels far. Whereas the Rishimu, which was also affected by the Tzimtzum, there's no sense of distance from me. That's clearly patently expressed. That's me, my Koyach HaGvul. So my first expression is going to be a, a world called Atzilus, where still in Atzilus being still bound up with the Eire itself, there's still this strong sense that these 10 emanations are all me. Still all me. It's still that strong sense. Ten Tzvidus, nothing independent, nothing other. It's me expressing myself in ten very finite ways. This is all the result of the Tzimtzum, etc. But even in the Tzvidus themselves, I'm more revealed in the higher ones and less revealed in the lower ones, even though it's me. This is a huge point I just said. It's me, but I'm revealed more in the higher, in Chachma, than in Bina, etc. But still not lost on the experience of Atzillus, that it's me. Then there comes a radical change. Now watch. Elam Abriya and Yitzhid and Asiya is going to emerge. And there already, it's a whole very different conversation. All of a sudden, we're hearing in Briya a whisper of not God, but creation. Creation that says is a God. Creation that says, I am the way I am because you created me, no, undoubtedly. Tremendous beetle. Lofty creatures, lofty spiritual entities that claim no originality, that claim no independence, that feel their constant coming into being by God. All is true. But already now, the shift from I'm revealing myself to I've now produced existence that feels me, but it's existence. And as you go down that chain, it feels me less. And the Elam don't feel me at all. But that shift from my expression to, that's Atzilus and above overall, to Bia, which is 
already some other entity acknowledging God in the very deepest uh, unified way, that big shift starts where? In Bia. So we're not hearing God's voice anymore. Now we're hearing creation's voice. Why? Because he's eclipsed himself so profoundly there that what he produces has the sense of self. In Bria, very unified. It's it also unified. It's, it's like they're holy worlds. There's no delusion that they're independent. They all feel patently that they are creations of God, but they feel they are creations. It's no longer the sense of in the, in the absolute truth. There's nothing other than God. There's a creation that comes from him that is nullified there, is dependent on him. Attilus, on the other hand, is still patently appreciated that this is the Avishta revealing himself. And it all starts with the shim. So again, lenoga bayatim so means that the level of the reshimo. Now I'll leave it to you to fill in the blank, and we'll move on. So lenoga bayatim so in a sentence or two means it's the darga where on the one hand, and the other hand. On the one hand, it's the expression of finitude, but on the other hand, there's no concealment. It's God's beginning impression into the world. Okay. But a question for you. I thought that the Rishimu was yeah. compared to like a signet ring where the highest level becomes impressed in creation and ultimately is the lowest level expressed in creation. But it sounds like the way you're describing it, the Rishimu is actually above Atsilos, is the impression that creates Atsilos. It is, certainly, yeah. It's the source of all of that. The Rishimu, in classic Chassidus and Kabbalah, it says statements like the Rishimu is the source of the Oisius and the Kalim, all the Gvul that follows. It's all rooted in the Rishimu. Rishimu, it means literally an impression. So what that means, to rephrase it using the language of impression, is that... Prior to the Rishimu, the level of the Oyer itself, well, that's patently God revealing himself. The impression that's left is, what's the impression component? Let's hit, like, hit the, the nail on the head. The impression component is, notwithstanding this concealment, the impression that this is just as much him revealing, expressing himself remains. That's what remains. Notwithstanding, no revelation now. But the regime of the Oyer Sof remains in the same way that the Oyer Sof patently saying God revealing himself. So to the regime is also saying God revealing himself. How is he revealing himself? In Gvul. But it's still him. That's the regime. So an external view of the regime just went dark. Just went dark. There's no revelation. Terrible. Great symptom. Look closer. There is a regime. This darkness says, no, 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 this darkness is Eibishter. This is God's Koyach HaGvul. This is no less him than the Eirin Tzof is. Eirin Tzof is Koyach HaBligvul. The Rishimba is Koyach HaGvul. And why is there a Koyach HaGvul? Now, why? This is this all the mind must explain. That the the the, uh, the Sar, the angel of Ace of Edom, is Yoshev Etzli. Right here. And Avoida, the classic Avoida of Yidin, does not reach that. But Avoida Bachol of Vav, Chavachol Nafshaka, Soiv, Mamale, all the Adich has had in the mind until now. And in reconciling Stidus in Chazal and in Psukim, we concluded that Haydn Ishtal Shalos is, is no difference, that he makes a difference. And here Adam sits. Yeah, because right there, look closer still to the Shimo, you're going to see. And where's that Nisav and Atzmos? The Abish just decided he wants to did it, but that's uppermost. That's the whole motivation for this whole process. That's the impression. The impression there is A, it's me, and B, it's my Kavana. It's all part, it's all one thing. Why is there an Oyer in Sof? Because I want to have a Tachten. Can't be a Tachten without an alien. So there's Gilu in the. It's. All of this is carried through in the impression. Why is it called an impression? Because overtly there's no revelation. 
Avert it's not gilui. Tell it, it's gvul. But the impression of the Eirin Sof remains, meaning just like the Eirin Sof is clearly Hashem revealing himself. Look closer here, the Shem is also God revealing himself in a radically different way. Why? Because he wants to dirip tachtonim. And in that sense, the Shem is even higher than the Eir. What's left after the Eir component has been removed is a much more atmi expression of him. Here's where Kavana starts to kick in. Oh, you want to dirip tachtonim? That's why you even made a gilay Eir. You made oil because you want a tacht. So the oil serves the tacht, the alien serves the tacht. That whole dynamic, that whole irony, all begins there in the Rishima. Isn't the Kavun the idea of the lower levels so that we can relate to? Yes, so, that we can relate to. We can, Hashem, even though it's with the Gvul. Yes, we can relate to, and then not just relate, reveal in the Gvul Atmos, Abish to himself. First of all, it's relatable. It's a starting point. We're in the world of Gvul. We are Gvul. For us, it's further. The Tzimtzum created for us this profound sense of distance, closeness, and farness. Not in the Rishimu. Gvul is not further than Bligvul in the Rishimu. There's no distance. That's the meaning of a Lenoga Boya Tzimtzum. What do you mean Lenoga Boya Tzimtzum? The whole Rishimu is produced because it was a Tzimtzum. This is Kasha and answer. What is the whole symbol? Because there was a symptom, the air is eclipsed, and this is darkness. This empty space, devoid of divine revelation. Naga means affected. Mean to say, not affected. Symptom carved symptom produces higher and lower. Know you more, know you less, and then can produce this complete sense of independence in Bri, it's it's all you. Didn't create a sense of distance. And as you probe the Rishimu deeper, it's even higher than the oil. Because the Rishimu was saying, you know, why there's an oil? Because he, God wants a dirabit achtoinim. Or God is speaking. It's, it's much simpler. God's narrating. You know why? The Rishimu reveals. You know why I revealed oil in self? I need oil in self. I need to reveal infinite. Because I've chosen a dirabit achtoinim. You have to have oil, and you have to have, oil and you have to have keli higher and lower. So the Rishimbo is more expressive of God's purpose in this whole thing, including the oil itself, than the oil itself itself is. So is it correct to say the Rishimbo is a, uh, an expression of etmos? It's not subject to tzimtzum, and it expresses purpose. Yeah, the kavon of atmos, more so than ah. oil. Yeah, yeah the, the intent of atmos, yeah, yes. And that's why, and hence, the Kaylees, the Shredish of the Kaylees, high, the Shredish of the Oyer, all of the ironies, I mean, the paradoxes throughout Ishtaushalis, especially Elam Hazar, that the Mata is rooted in the higher. It all starts with the Rishim. Yeah. So, if the Rishim is the Shredish of the Kaylee. I speak up, sorry. Right, the Rishim is the Shredish of the Kaylee. Yeah. And, uh, and safe, I guess, that the shirt, the air that comes down through the cloud, the, the, the whole thing is that through Kaylee, also through the concealment of the air in Seder Shtatsa, it's also we can we can touch essence. That, that, yes, yeah, but yeah, the, yeah, just exactly. The Kaylee, but Panemius is rooted higher than the air is because therein lies the Kavan. The Kavan is of Atmos is Dirib Tachtain in, in again, a simple language or a, another formula. It's a brief this. It, it, life was much simpler. You know, you're down here to earn a place up there. Finish higher is higher, down is down, and, and uh, you're down here to, to extract yourself, overcome it, and, and everything else, face the temptations, and earn a place in, in bliss and divine revelation. And now we're saying that's Bechitzonius. Pinimi Sekavon is Adanab. In the Tachten, and, and to reveal in the Tachten. This kavon atmos, and with atmos comes all these revelations too. You're not going to be missing any of the glory and bliss of of up there. It's a whole different. It's a very different kind of glory and bliss. It's a glory and bliss that expresses the essence, which is a whole different tainug, tainug atzmi. At any rate, so yeah. So what I try to do today, and it's as useful maybe for yourself in thinking. In thinking about anything that's going to establish us, let, let's have Hashem talk. You, you narrate what you're doing. God, what, what is this? Tell, explain what's going on. 
This is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. As Chassidus reveals it. Each level. It comes to Bria, God stops talking. He's so eclipsed that we start to hear voices of angels, Malachim, Mitzrafim, and they're all saying Kodesh, and yet, yeah, fantastic. But it's now, it's already the world of Bria, acknowledging God. God is still there, present. Atmos is present in all, in all things. Till, till the bottom, till the bottom, you and I, Mamish Nifrodim, separate, finite, Sheikh Nibotechim, dwellers of house, in houses of mortar. Houses. Should be a bay. Sometimes it's a churva. It's a ruin. And so he, he's here. And he wants us to reveal his very essence. This is where he wants to be revealed. Uh, not, and, and therefore, it's even more, since he wants to be revealed in the Tacht, and kind of can't be revealed in the alien. But that's another. The alien will only access the essence through the Tacht. The end, the end, the, the, the alien will, well, you know, it's happening now. I think this is my little fantasy here. This is never, Teres Moshe, you, not Teres Moshe Rabbeinu. That since the Rebbe went, as it were, the Milo, so there's a whole revolution of Milo, completely shaken out of their complacency. They thought that that's where it's at, basking in the divine revelation. It says, Nishtazoi, the Kavan of Atmos is in Tachten. And the whole heaven is in this in turmoil, rooting, rooting for us, Lamata, to end the job and make it the, and bring Mashiach. Because they sense that you think you know God. This is where Atmos is found. So the revolution is, is in heaven. Not just here. First, this made a revolution here. Over and above the protests, every time we did such a revolution happened, heaven went crazy. The Malachim went crazy. When the Torah was given, and Alta became with Tanya, and then the Malachim again, another protest. The kid just can't get it. Can't get it. What do you mean the Kavan is the Tacht and Gvul, Halim, the Edoim? Here's the Kavan. Where the, where the Kavan? Where, where it's at? Where, where? We are where truth is at. We know, we experience, we feel. No. See, I'm sure he's. I, there's no way that the Rebbe is, is there, there, and then they're not completely like. Because I'm sure of a, a battle. But all the my modern that he said, they're not. They're not uh, said once and goodbye, Charlie. The is, we're saying the my modern, so we're being murdered again. Yeah, all of heaven right now is over already. The whole complacency for how many thousands of years, life is good, and they justify suffering down here, and it's all meant to be, that's okay. You'll learn a place in heaven, it'll be all good, you'll massage you, massage you, you forget about the bad old days, it'll be like a blink of an eye, it says, it says nothing. That's what's for the longest time. For the longest time, that's how heaven looked at things. That's why the big tzaddikim went up, and they promised when she's going to come, and they were seduced. I feel from that perspective, it's not so terrible. It's the kavanah that leads to the higher, every excuse. And it's all valid. Until the Rebbe. No, no, no. Nobody suffers anymore. And this little child and this good for the Mazar Gash. See, he, he, he said, I told you, you know. It, he didn't go into Gan Eden. You know the story. Tav Shemem test, five years, Pashas Kairach, five years to the day. Hey, Tammuz. Five years to the day before Gimel Tammuz. It's Mugit, and Mugit, look it up, Sefer Zichas Mem test. One of the, one of the craziest things we ever heard. End of the Fabrengen, the Betels, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I don't know, we're telling stories that... A story meant that if you the Bedich, we didn't say names. Gedolim that said they're going to go up, they're not going to you're going to Ganeid until Mashiach comes. Mashiach didn't come, what happened? They got Ganeid and found a way to get them. And they were seduced again by the. So what's the eight? What's the eight? The Rebbe smiled. I mean, the Rebbe smiles, and something like this, you know, this is. Whoa, 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 whoa. The eight is apparently it's just to make a Nader al Das Rabin. If you make a nader contingent upon the the rabbim, you can't be released, and you get unless you get the rabbim's permission. No one knew that I was talking here. We thought he meant the rabbits. And 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 
in those days, most of the a lot of the Fabengen didn't get into the Mugadigasich. Not the whole Fabeng that I've been saying. There's only certain things. This went in, Mugad, everything. I remember the shock we all had when we uh, was, was in Shomadi then when we heard the Fabeng and the, the Chazor. Very strange. So what did I be saying? He made a Neid al Das at Abim. Not to ask them. He, to me, it seems he had to connect it to Allah. He has to be Allah. He's saying, he, he's, he's raised with the Rabbim. The Rabbim is suffering. I'm here with you. Muhammad Siyas is the Rabbim. Heaven's not good. The heaven can't seduce me, will not seduce me. I'm putting words here, but but he kind of made it like halachically. That even I halacha shouldn't say, you know, have, have a protest. If you go to Maila, you know, that's the, the, the Lakha says you have to follow the conduct of where you go. Also, the character of it can you come to a city, you, you conduct yourself according to their conduct. In heaven, heaven explains everything, all suffering. You're going to come along and, and revolutionize heaven. No, yeah. You will cover the Atmos, the Dirbetachtain. He's telling them the Abish is in pain. You God doesn't even know that. You're so blinded by the light. Okay, it's not your fault. That's how God made it. Oh, and Gilui and bliss. You can't even feel God crying. Did he did he ever bring it up again? Or just that one time? Not like that, or just that one time. Hey Tom was Toshi Memtes. As I always say, the emphasis is I, anybody that observes the Rebbe for a, a day, a week, a month, they wouldn't need this to, to be told this. Here's a Jew that will not be seduced by anything till every year is taken out of Golas. You don't have to be, you don't have to know this, you don't have to be Gechosid, you don't have to know about Nidah Asrabim. You don't have to even be Jewish. A little bit, look at his life, his day, his history, what the man says, nothing's going to buy him. Till Mashiach comes, until here, Lamata, every Jew is taken out of Golos and there's no more suffering, nothing will, will, will distract him, nothing. Seems again, he wanted to make it the Allah, so even Torah shouldn't have a taina. You're coming in heaven, you're making a whole revolution. And you're not leaving Elam Hazar, you're staying with Yechsidim. You're not going to get Naden. It's never happened such before. It never happened. It never happened. Every Tzadik left the world and Aymed the Mishamish and finding good, good advocates on high, everything fine and good. Turning the whole heaven over and staying with Chsidim, Hila Mata, and not going, refusing to enter into the pearly gates. It's never happened before. You gotta follow the you gotta follow the rules and be, be respectful. This is heaven. She made an irada sarabi. Allah, oh, sorry. Allah says you know, he's bound to it. And that's just my opinion. Why I had to say make him frame it that way. Amda mazel im rakadish borcho and you Altira the Yaakov did not be afraid, my servant Yaakov, I feel actually so even Edom sits by me. As he was saying before that the overt Shoirish of Edom is higher than the Yid. The Yid is connected to Shemavaya, Kechelakavaya, that's the Kav, that's the Giloi, Male, Saibab. And the Shoresh of Umus Ha'olam is, is Shem Elohim, and the Shoresh of Shem Elohim is the, is the, is the Rishim. And the Rishim was laying on the back simsu. Higher than, than Shem Avaya, which is a simsum already. It's Gilui, but, but descriptive Gilui. Why is he there? Because my Kavana is here, which you are going to reveal, my child. And that's the Yavoid of Bachon Baitcha, Taken up a Cholavot of Han Afshacha. It's not going to not going to do it. We stuck in Ishtaoshalus. But to reveal Kavanas Atmos is Tvilas Arshir, as the Mamma goes on to say. 
I know Shagabal, because is the reason that he's so high. I can go back. I'm sorry. Middle of the second line. I'll bring him down. Mishom from there. I'll bring him down. From from their means, from their means, you I will finally reveal, says God, my inner intent, which is right there with me. And that's where his downfall, his tick on his beard is going to happen. It, why is there an Elam Hazard? Because I want to did an Elam Hazard. And part of that did is Edom and Elam and Golis, all of it. Misham, from there, where the Rishim of the Pnimius Akavana is expressed, from that, from there is his downfall. His tikkun, his, his the downfall of the negativity and the, the positivity of all in this Tachlans, the Dira. The, his, his, the chutzpah part is gone. The opposition is gone. The defiant is gone. The suffering is gone. The helen part is gone. What's left is the Tachtan now expressing part of the whole Dira which you, the Yid, creates through the Avaida B'chon Ba'itcha. We described it metaphorically. I gave an example, of, not, exa not, not an example, but a metaphor of a chasana to describe the end, end game. Remember? What is it? There's a lot desire to compare this world to Tahasana. Hilula means also means a wedding. Tahasana and Kavani is that the whole world is invited to this wedding to celebrate the mitzvah tans, if you would, of Eden and the Abishta. Every year in the Abishta will be locked in an embrace, and the whole world stands around in awe and celebrates and and is the and is the orchestra, this great symphony that will play that song. <laughs> As the Abishtas dances with each yid, that's Gula. That's the whole world is part of this. And the whole and, and the, the privilege that every human being will have to be at this wedding and to contribute his note, his instrument to this great symphony that celebrates his soul of Malka Bil Khadoi. Eden and the Abishta. And then they're going to the Yichud room, but he waits outside in great expectancy and, and awe of this Yichud. Is you know the chuppah, they're all over the stages, all of it. The nisuyin, the chuppah man is matan teira, but the the yichud and the nisuyin is is lost in love. The yichud and then the big simcha come out of the yichud room and again the whole world fire, expressing bereishis bishvilat yisrael bishvilat teira. Bodily kin, the opening words of the chumish, then will be. Will be. And what's going to precipitate it? Read the Rashi a few lines down. Because the Umusailam will say, List him at them. That's the final, the final battle. And Eden will finally wake up and say, Bresh is bodily Kim. He gave it to us. Oh, now we understand. Let's celebrate. Nost Chilos and Oh, opening words of Chumash Rashi. That's the description. Of the final struggle of Alan Nisoyan and the end result. Okay, a little bit further. Yeah, this is bad. The story is, is uh, it's not yeah, they never, the never in history was there such a charge, at least they not until now. Okay. That's the opening, Breshis, Bodelikim, 
Rashi, Prutisha Mikra, why does the Torah start with Breshis Baralikim? Because the world is, a time will come. She, um, so Elam was saying, list, um, so the country world is screaming, list about them, Colonius. And your answer is Breshis, Breshus, Nosnalam, then took it from them and gave Nosnalon, Lachus Asoilo. And that's the end of Golos. I remember when the Rebbe came down, I forgot when it was with the Chumash in his hand, very rare. I mean, the whole crisis that you saw there in the UN was going on. And found it was read from the Chumash. Posuk and Rashi. Like everything we didn't realize then. It was happening then. But to get closer and closer to Geula, how could it, this is exactly what's happening. This is the whole battle. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you. A wonderful day, everybody. Pursuit of